Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and it is 1.8.1 this time, not 1.11 and this video I present a dragon based SSTO. Now this is not a regular dragon it looks like one because I was lazy and didn't want to redo the textures per se but it is obviously based on the shape of a dragon intentionally but a real dragon would be about this size. This is twice the size in all dimensions as the regular dragon and the purpose of it is to be a launch vehicle and uh, it turns out that if you size dragon by a factor of two and uh, give the super dracos the qualities of a single raptor engine you get a reasonable result now you can't have the full dragon's mass it's basically it's basically a fuel tank right now there's no cabin there's no windows there's no hatch it's not like that uh, it is basically a big fuel tank with a rap the equivalent of a Raptor engine and RCS and uh, a hatch that is sort of like a fairing. In fact, rather than uh, show it to you like this for now, uh, let's uh, mock it up using procedural parts to verify the size of it and the qualities we expect out of it. So an integral structure tank, not a balloon tank. We're not that cheaty. Uh, I'll just go with a uh, regular cone shape. Uh, technically, the dragon has a little bit more bulk to it, so this will be underestimating the thing a little bit. And what we're going for is some shape like that, basically. And what we want is a heat shield that will be uh, the equivalent. Um, let's just get the biggest one and scale it up. But this is a lunar raid heat shield, so we'll probably have less less ablator on it. Um, let's say something like that. Okay, and then uh, the equivalent of a fairing. But we also need the engine, but I'll, I'll sort that out in a sec. Okay, so obviously this is too big, but we need a controller. And again, I'm just slapping it together to verify the mass of it and thereby justify what we've got with the oversized dragon model that I have waiting for us. Waiting for us to test. Because I don't know, I haven't tested it. I haven't brought it to orbit yet. I don't know whether it'll get to orbit and what payload it'll carry. So a Raptor sea level. It's basically a Raptor sea level. In practice, what we would want is eight of them. I don't know, there's two options. We can have them oper uh, have the thrust operating through the normal Super Draco positions, in which case we would have to have eight different engines using methane and oxygen uh, with the efficiency of a Raptor engine, which would be difficult. Or we could have a trapdoor in the heat shield and tuck it in there. And, and so the door would open, thrust would come through, door would close for re-entry, and that would be that. So that's option number two. And obviously I prefer option number two. Uh, but I didn't want to make a model of option number two for now, unless we just start using this on a regular basis. So what we're going to do is we're going to invert this. Uh, nope, not two of them. That would be too much mass. Okay. So what we have here is 9,636 meters per second without the parachutes. Okay. That's another thing that we need to add and RCS system and stuff like that. Uh, but the dry mass here ultimately is 10.553 tons. All right, and that's including the Raptor. Uh, it's 8.793 tons without the Raptor and the core. So 10.553 tons is what we're looking at. Uh, actually, we can make that a little bit less with aluminum lithium instead. Uh, so with an aluminum lithium tank, we can get down to 9.396 tons. Okay. And that's down there too. So given that, let's take a look at the Dragon SSTO that I had. Okay, so we have a payload on here. Mm, open nose cone. And this is another reason why I liked it because we get to put our payload in the nose cone. This is in fact the Skyrora XL third stage with a Pioneer probe for some reason. I don't know. Uh, I need something that would fit, so. Uh, the payload mass right now is, taking that off, uh, 
723 tons, so 723 kilograms. And that's what's in there. Did I tuck that in? No, that's fine. Okay, so 723 kilograms, and the rest of it is this, and you can see the dry mass. We can dump all the fuel. Uh, 10 tons. So we're just around there. I think that's reading 643, so I don't know how it's figuring that. We've got little parachutes. The parachute mass isn't that heavy um, because this isn't that heavy when it's just a tank with a heat shield on it and the engine. Uh, the engine's 1.6 tons, so part mass 0.271. I mean, I guess it's somewhat heavy, but it's not the worst. So I don't know about the case mass, if we can reduce that. If we use smaller parachutes, um, I think we could go previous size and apply settings. Apply settings to symmetry counterparts. Okay, maybe that would be even better, but maybe we should make it the big size to be, I don't know, less cheaty? I don't know what we're going to say. All right, so we're going to aim for six to 700 kilograms with this. And so this is a small sat deployment system. You've seen all the small sat deployment systems. Skyrora is one of those. And then there's the launcher space one and a whole bunch of things. But wouldn't this be easier, right? I mean, why not do this? This is, this is pretty straightforward. Why not just make a big tank with a heat shield and thrusters. I mean, ideally a single very high chamber pressure staged combustion engine, of course, is what we're using. I guess I guess I can see why they're not doing that because it is a little bit complicated. But all right, let's take it out to the pad and see if it works. Hmm. I feel like this is not the pad I was intending to launch from. But okay. Uh, at least we're not blowing up immediately. Throttle up, SAS on. Now the engines have to have a little bit of gimbling. It could work out as differential thrust uh, if we're doing the eight nozzle system. Of course, the, the Raptor would need gimbling if it's a single Raptor there. And then the RCS would have to be activated to control roll or something like that. But anyway, SAS on, throttle up, and ignition. and launch. Now we don't have a methane oxygen plume because I'm still using the old plumes for the Super Dracos. Again, uh, I just wanted to test the idea out and keep it simple. Thrust weight ratio initially not very high as you can see. Um, we are deviating. We're deviating. No. No. Why? You can gimbal. You can gimbal, come on. Okay, um... RCS? Uh, the aerodynamics of this might not be great. Oh my god, no! Maybe something about our balance. Well, this is no good. Okay, we may need small control surfaces. Okay, things things blew up. All right, let's uh, let's adjust things. I mean, obviously we don't have the trunk, but I decided that we'd have enough electric charge. Uh, normally the fins are only for aborts, but I guess this is sort of like an abort. I don't know. Maybe I should increase. I only put two degrees of gimbal. You see, that might not be enough. I mean, I figured that we wouldn't be able to get away with too much more than that, whether we put the stuff in there. I mean, but if it's differential thrust, we could get away with more than that. But okay, um, fins. The problem with the fins is, of course, re-entry. Uh, I don't want them poking out. But maybe we will just heat shield them. We'll assume that they're heat shielded. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> This suddenly got a lot more interesting. I feel like maybe something's off-center here. I mean, there is a descent mode, but I don't think we're off-center to begin with. Okay, well, ignition. These need to have a faster startup. 
We'll work on that. Let's go straight up for a while. It doesn't have that much thrust weight ratio initially. It gets a lot of thrust weight ratio at the end and we'll need to throttle down, but... Initially... Oh, it's deviating. Oh, oh, oh. Don't go too far away from the prograde vector. Yeah, it's, it's aerodynamics are bad. Aerodynamics are bad. We're getting through this. We're getting through this. Lots of drag. You can tell because we'd be a lot faster at this point if not for the drag. Ooh. It's not really holding the pitch very well. It's maxing out again. Well, do your best, little pod. Wow, it really does not like deviating from prograde. We'll have to plan this a lot better. I mean, Smart ESS is trying to pitch up, but it can't. Okay, well, we can't make orbit like this. Hmm. Yeah, wasn't thrilled by... Oh, it's an all-moving space plane wing. Let me increase the control deflection limit. Having the trunk would be a prohibitive mass, so... Or not carrying the trunk, for sure. But this is getting a bit awkward. I certainly don't want to carry less payload. We better be able to do this, darn it. Okay, SAS on, throttle up. And... Ignition. Once again, forgive me for the plume. Ultimately, all our problems come from turning too soon. So we'll just we'll just keep it like this for a while, if we can. It's sort of leaning towards the south a bit. Oh, it's really not gaining any speed here. It might need to throttle down during max cube, just because there's a lot of dynamic pressure on it. We're turning much higher than we normally would. Look at the fins. They're also producing a lot of drag like that. Oh gosh. Come on. Oh gosh. Come on. Oh no. Come on, there can't be that much aerodynamics. <laughs> oh, maybe she just spin stabilize it. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Uh... RCS? <laughs> oh god. You know what? Just close to Apoapsis. <laughs> well, we don't have enough to make orbit. This is gonna be one of those valiant practical efforts you know, sometimes things look good on paper when you do the math. And then you bump up against reality, in this case of aerodynamics, and it, it gets a lot harder. All right, well, we'll get as close as we can. This should be, yeah, it's neutral. So there's nothing about the pod intrinsically. Maybe there's a little bit of a pitch issue. It's getting higher, too. Maybe there's some imbalance. Wow, yeah, it's still wiggling a lot. We're in space, it's not aerodynamics. This must be some mass issue. It could be very subtle. But I'll have to figure that out. In principle, this could work. But, oh gosh. I mean, conceptually, it's sort of like the DCX, you know, Delta Clipper. You know, I mean, it's basically the same idea. It's not a new idea, but in the age of everybody wanting to develop little CubeSat launchers, it's interesting that nobody's trying it, is, is the thing. And maybe I should just make a DCX instead of this. We'll see. But, 
it was it just happened to be the case that if, if you scaled up a uh, dragon by a factor of two, you could use a raptor to do this. It filled the volume and everything. So I thought that was interesting. But I have encountered some flaws. Okay, well, with this not really successful SSTO returning to the surface with its payload at 8.8 .8 meters per second. I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.